so there were 16 total properties that are being proposed to be assessed for the uh, alley resurfacing between uh, Chestnut Street and um, Mead Street, west of Elm Street, and then also the section of the alley uh, between Sherman Street and Chestnut Street, west of Elm Street. Uh, the total cost of the assessments is $19,292.36. As I mentioned, that's divided by 16 properties based upon the lineal foot of frontage. Um, the estimated cost was $4.31 per lineal foot of frontage. Uh, the actual cost, which is what we derived for the proposed assessments, is $3.51 per lineal foot. And so definitely a, a lower price there. Um, the, there's three different invoices, invoice costs that the property owners uh, have identified on their pros, proposed assessment reports. Uh, the range is from $175.50 for a 50-foot uh, parcel, $263.25 for a 75-foot parcel, and then uh, $351 for a 100-foot parcel. There were two parcels identified in, in the assessment district that um, were corrected as having, they have uh, uh, deferred assessment for restricted access covenant. So they, their invoices uh, uh, are modified to a zero charge um, it was something that pre-existed prior to, I think they were in um, 2014, the restricted access covenants were approved, and by city policy, um, proposed or uh, permanent street surfacing costs uh, cannot be levied for the improvements at this time, but those costs are deferred until either they want their access back or... Um, well, yeah, until they want their access back at such time they can um, pay for the deferred assessment. So that concludes my review of the proposed assessment report. Thank you. So just to remind everyone that this was supposed to be an assessment hearing. Sounds like there's no one in the crowd tonight, but if you would like to reach out, all our information is available via the city website, or if you call down to City Hall, they'll be happy to provide you with our email and phone numbers. So that brings us to item number three, which is a lot of what Joe just did, which is review engineer's assessment report and take action on assessment resolution for the alley resurfacing west of Elm Street, between Mead Street and Chestnut Street, and between Chestnut Street and Sherman Street. So based on the review of the report, the staff recommendation is for a motion to accept the engineer's report and uh, approve the resolution that is uh, included in the packet. Thank you. I will make a motion to approve the engineer's report and move forward with the action included in the packet. Second. So we have a motion and a second on the floor. All in favor, signal by saying aye. 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 Motion carries 3-0 on to item number four, which is review the DPW report. Thank you. So enclosed in your packet is the public works report. Uh, this report will also be included on the uh, public works page of the city's website. I'll touch on just a few highlights. Um, out at the airport, the hangar construction is now substantially complete. Uh, they're wrapping up on punchless items and getting re ready to close that project out. Uh, buildings and grounds, uh, we continue with two to five mowers in use. Um, and we do have, uh, as part of the the DNR grant from last year's 
uh, catastrophic storm event. Uh, we're looking at our fall tree planting locations and, uh, and putting together some proposals uh, to aid the city in, in that endeavor. Um, from engineering, uh, an item that has been of interest to older persons now for several months is the status of the special assessment study. Uh, a draft report's complete and uh, being reviewed by staff. There's still some, some data and some fine tuning that needs to, um, to be included to finalize that. We anticipate that within the next uh, two to three weeks, we'll have a copy of that report sent out to all the persons in advance of the September Public Works meeting, uh, at which time we'll have a referral to uh, review and discuss. Additionally, the flood modeling along the Wisconsin River near the roundabout and the DOT office building in cooperation with the Department of Administration um, is wrapping up. We are reviewing uh, a couple of uh, solutions there and anticipate being able to present that sometime here in the near future. Uh, hopefully, if, if everything works out right, the way the flood modeling looks, we'll have some solutions that will uh, greatly minimize the efforts of staff to prevent flooding in a 100 year event in that area. A little update on our construction projects. Our 10th Street South project is complete. Our Chase Street uh, from 17th Avenue to 21st Avenue South is complete. The Centralia parking lot, center parking lot is complete. Um, the second avenue south from 10th avenue to west riverview expressway is is getting close um, we do have some asphalt uh, finished coat of asphalt should be arriving soon um, and we are holding off on the uh, finish topsoil and seed until we get a little closer into the fall season so that uh if we did we did address it with property owners if if they have the ability or interest in watering it but if we're to plant it now we're just going to grow a crop of weeds so we're holding off on that. And our Washington Street from 12th Street South to Baker is progressing very well. Our sign shop has been uh, working. If you've, if you've been driving around, you're gonna notice that the uh, center lines have been freshened up in a number of areas. Uh, Grand Avenue, Highway 34, some of our other uh, arterials uh, crosswalks around uh, middle school and Washington School. Um, those areas have been worked on and, and we continue to paint in the evening so that uh, hopefully it's dry before morning and people start really um, driving on it. And the quad axle dump truck that was damaged a few months ago, the new one has been put into service. So we're excited about uh, getting that vehicle back into the fleet. Uh, we've also been working with developers, and this has been a, a hot topic for um, a number of older persons have been hearing from some of the residents uh, in the Rosewood subdivision. Uh, staff continues to work with the developers in efforts to complete that project in accordance with the development agreement. Uh, I've had several meetings, um, kind of laid down some anticipated plans and working with our, our, uh, our uh, planning and development coordinator on that as well. And we did facilitate an urban forestry grant, kind of a mid-project mid inspection with the DNR and city staff and, and the DNR representative was very impressed with the city staff and the work that staff has done to date. So that includes the, concludes the summary of the report. Um, I would encourage you to take some time to look at it. Um, once again, I think it's, it's, uh, it's impressive for me too to really review and uh, appreciate the work that our staff does every month uh, because it is a lot of work. Thank you, Mr. Terry. Any questions for Joe before we move on to item number six or five actually? No. No questions, good report. And thanks for continuing to work on that assessment study. You bet. So September, you're saying that? We'll yeah, you should see something in a few weeks. We're, we're, we're getting real close. Thank you. All right, so on to item number five, which is review the One Mile Creek study phase one and consider moving into phase two. So 
So I'll give you just a little bit of background on what the One Mile Creek project is, and then uh, we'll get into the the study and the recent meeting that we had with the uh, with the neighbors. Uh, so several years ago, we've been working on this project and in correspondence with the property owners now for for several years, and um, progress has been a bit slow, and um, but the, the main purpose, the main purpose of pursuing this this project is that the uh, the city city benefits from utilizing the the ponds, the One Mile Creek ponds, between Two Mile Avenue and Lincoln Street for stormwater credits, and it's part of our Wisconsin DNR permit that we remove both sediment and uh, more recently uh, work towards re removing phosphorus from, from stormwater runoff. And so in discussion, discussions with the DNR, they said, okay, city, if you get legal access to the ponds and also permit the, the dams that are on that waterway, uh, the, the DNR would, would grant storm sewer credits or, st or storm stormwater credits. Um, so we've been, we've been slowly working with property owners. Um, the, the questions, questions kept coming up that we just couldn't answer, uh, without getting into more of a, more of a study, um, and looking at things more closely. And so we, we entered into a two phase study with a consultant. Uh, it was broken up into two phases so we could gauge the involvement and uh, confidence of the property owners along the way. And um, so we've, we've gone through the first phase, which was settling, setting up the uh, computer models and taking a look at um, what's, th what's the best, uh, best use of that impoundment. There's, there's two ponds, there's a lower pond and then there's an upper pond. And the results of that study, the first phase of the study showed that the, uh, the lower pond achieves the, the, best, uh, uh, the best sediment removal. That's the most advantageous to the city. Um, for the city to pursue the upper pond, uh, which also has a, a secondary dam structure, it really isn't advantageous to build a second structure. Um, the one that's there currently has essentially failed. Um, so I, our current uh, recommendation based on the first phase, which we shared with the property owners, was that the city would, be, would still benefit from the additional surface area of both ponds, but only likely pursue the uh, permitting of the of the lower structure, the, the the dam near Two Mile Avenue. Um, so that brings us to the, the results of the discussion with the property owners on July 22nd. Uh, seven of nine property owners attended the meeting, and um, I did receive a phone call from an eighth property owner. So I've yet to talk with them uh, and update them on the results of the first phase, but. Um, all the property owners that we've talked with at the meeting agreed that it'd be worthwhile to pursue the second phase of the study, which gets into um, more of the conceptual design. And uh, it would answer the, the one primary concern that the residents had uh, at the meeting, which was if, if the city doesn't participate in the upper dam structure, replacing that and fixing it up, what would the resulting pond size be on that upper dam or upper pond? And so phase two really would answer that question um, for both the city and, and the uh, property owners. Um, the, the studies included in the packet, the cost to uh, pursue the second phase is $5,900. Um, it's already budgeted, so there's there's funds available to do that. Um, originally, it was, like I said, requested that uh, 
we set it up in two phases so that if we could gauge the property owner's interest as we moved along and um, bring it back to the committee before uh, moving into phase two. So uh, that's, that's the request for the committee is based upon the information provided and, and where we stand with the study. If uh, the committee has any questions, of course, and then if there's desire and interest to move into phase two. Thank you, Joe. Is there any questions in regards to moving to phase two? No questions. All right, thank you. Well, go ahead. I don't have any questions. I'd move, I'd make a motion to move to phase two of the study. I'll second. All right, we got a motion and a second on moving to phase two for the one mile creek study. All in favor, signal by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. On to item number six, which is discussed developing a large item garbage collection program. Anybody like to kick this one off? Sure, I'll kick it off. Um, enclosed in the packet um, is the referral from Alderperson Kellogg to develop a systematic method to pick up uh, large refuse items. Uh, the background information states the city has successfully developed a recycling and refuse process. Periodically, there is refuse placed on the curb throughout the city with residents moving. With the new refuse collection process, there are challenges for some individuals to dispose of appliances, tires, couches, et cetera. Um, under options available, uh, Alder Person Kellogg would like the committee to discuss the possibility of establishing a systematic way of collecting large refuse. This would help keep our neighborhoods more appealing and avoid having large quantity of refuse on the curb for a period of time. The cost of the refuse pickup would still be charged to the landowner. Uh, the concept suggested is similar to weekly brush pickup. A large volume pickup would be on the first Monday of the month. Um, now this would be the same time for appliances, tires, et cetera, to be picked up, and the land orders would be charged for this pickup. This method would allow the city to plan accordingly rather than having pickups throughout the month. Um, Alderperson Kellogg is requesting the committee uh, consider this and it would be financed uh, through a uh, fee schedule that that there's that there would be no um, additional costs and it may reduce the number of ordinance violations uh, there is a concern that there may be a problem with charging and receiving funds for pickups so we did spend some time and reviewed this and um, I do have a report that's in the packet and I'll, I'll try to fairly quickly go through it. Um, Alderperson Kellogg has submitted a referral to consider the establishment of a large item collection program. The desired scope of the program was defined as a monthly collection of any large item, couch, TV, tires, appliances, etc. For the purpose of this memorandum, it's understood that service would be restricted to one and two family residential properties. Um, I've got several categories here. For administration, is any large item collection program would serve a small portion of the city's residents at any one time, staff recommends a program operate by appointment only. Without appointments, staff would spend an excessive amount of their time driving the two to 300 miles to check all the city residents. The city's required appointments for leaf collection for the past year, and while this has dramatically reduced collection time, residents are not calling in as required. So a significant public education effort will likely be required as well as a robust enforcement program uh, for any program like this to be successful. In considering operations, uh, determining the amount of time it would take staff to perform this type of service is challenging because the city has not provided this type of service in the past and estimating demand is subjective. I anticipate this service would take a four-person crew 
with two to three dump trucks and an end loader with a grapple to patrol the city. I believe it would take eight to 10 days per month to manage collections if the service is going to include tires and various appliances. Tires, appliances without Freon, and appliances with Freon need to be sorted and delivered separately from couches, mattresses, carpet, and other general large items. There would need to be one truck that collects appliances and tires, and the other two trucks would collect general large item refuse. Alternatively, if a three-person, two-truck crew were used, the city would potentially have to make two trips to the same areas, one for appliances and tires, and one for other large items. Facilitating the program with city staff and equipment would require uh, compromising other services. For example, um, street maintenance might be a possibility, uh, but given that the street replacement program is currently not sustainable, uh, as an example, a street built this year wouldn't be replaced again until 2170. It's to be expected that street maintenance responsibilities will continue to increase. So far for this year, staff has completed about 25% of the asphalt patch repairs identified, and it's not likely that we're really gonna get into any concrete repairs this year. And after completing 45 catch basin uh, repairs and rebuilds, there are currently 30 more identified that need to be repaired and built. So. Uh, reducing any storm, street, or wastewater maintenance activity that serves the community as a whole is not recommended by staff. Another option might be uh, brush collection. Brush collection currently takes about one week monthly with, a two, with two two person crews. If brush collection were eliminated, there'd likely be enough staff to perform a large item collection program. Another option is to facilitate a program by a contractor, and that may be challenging. Uh, we did contact Advanced Disposal, and they would not perform a large item collection program that includes tires and appliances. Uh, they could provide service to collect other large items, although they're not really able to provide an estimate because the, the scope of the collection isn't currently determined. Uh, financing, the referral suggests city residents could be charged for collection. Based on the finance director's communication with the Department of Administration, uh, their interpretation of the levy, levy limit law would require a decrease in the city's levy to make up for any income from charging residents for refuse collection, any type of refuse collection. So the city could not financially administer this program without cutting costs from another program or passing a referendum for the service. Um, I do list some estimated costs. Uh, those costs actually for uh, the disposal costs are, are uh, real costs. And then my estimate for staff and benefits, I have a range in there depending on the, the size of the crew and the time it takes. Um, so I did a little bit of analysis. If 5% of the community utilize the services for tires and appliances once per year, and 50 tons of materials are collected per month, and the city normally collects about 450 tons of, of regular refuse per month. The annual disposal fees, labor, and equipment costs would be about between 250 dollars and uh, $300,000 a year. So the staff recommendation at this point is the perceived problem is waste materials placed outdoors in public view. Now this is currently an ordinance violation and a citable offense. Residents can currently haul large items, including appliances and tires, and dispose of them at the local landfill for a fee or hire local contractors to haul items for them. Continuing noncompliance can result in orders for the city to abate the nuisance, wherein the city can remove the items uh, from the property and the property owner can be charged for disposal. And at this point, staff recommends maintaining this ordinance and dealing with violators as required. A large item collection program would ideally be a nice service for the community. But staff's opinion is it's a little out of reach when we're evaluating priorities, responsibilities, the percentage of residents that would be served by this service, the potential loss in other public services, um, aesthetics of large items placed out by the street regularly, cost, and the existence of private alternatives. 
since a program cannot be charged a fee, um, it could potentially encourage the disposal of appliances and tires and such from outside the city because it would have to be a free service. So at this time, staff doesn't recommend embarking um, on, a, on a, or administrating a large item collection program at this current time. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Terry. Uh, I'll, I'll start off with this one just saying, I think the intentions are great here. I do, however, have same concerns that city staff has and, and actually some others, especially in that this to me seems almost like a subsidization to landlords. And I myself am a landlord, but I also represent taxpayers of Wisconsin Rapids. And there is private options out there. It is very convenient to have your renters move out and put things on the curb every year. There's a lot of turnover in rentals, as we know. But to hurt the rest of the city and those who pay taxes and, and have to mess with the tax levy, I, I don't think this is an option we should go with. Uh, it, it's the way it used to be, and we used to be able to do that when tax revenues were higher and things were different. There's a reason we moved to the, the two-can system of recycling and garbage. And I, I think adding this in when there is private options is not something that we should be taking up when we're worried about the mill closing and where our tax revenues are at. So again, great intentions. I, I think this is definitely something we can bring up every year. And if it ever becomes an option that we can move forward with, let's do it. But at this point, especially after Mr. Terry's report, he put a lot of work into, and there's a lot of numbers there that just show that this is, in my opinion, not an option for us at this time. So. I won't be making a motion. If anybody does, I'll be voting in the negative on this, but I will leave it open to anybody else who has any comments at this time. Um, this is Scott. I have a concern. You know, um, I was a principal, and to determine the number of teachers I got at my school, they took the number of students in the school and divided by 21 or 22 and said to me, these are the number of teachers you have. Well, one grade level might be a large number, another grade level might be smaller, another grade level might be needy. But the answer to me was, that's your problem, Kellogg. You deal with it. You deal with it. So you work with your staff and you come up with combination classes or you come up with other, a larger class, maybe of certain types of students and a smaller class of certain types of students. But you figure it out. And then after school starts, if you get a busload of new kids, maybe they have to make an adjustment. But it seems to me, another thing too, eight years ago, when I um, was an alderman, we went through a program called Six Sigma. And it was a program in which all the um, department heads met. And we went through a process of talking about how you can make your staff and programs more efficient, okay? There was a whole process that we went through. And I was at those meetings and I worked with the library. And for example, the library, when they get a book, they used to handle it, let's say, eight times before it got back onto the shelf. So they analyzed the problem and they wanted new programs. Well, they didn't want to go to the Common Council and say, hey, we want a new program. Well, there's no money. There's no money for that new program. So they sat down and for example, where they receive um, books on the outside there, they had a dumpster that they wouldn't move. Uh, it couldn't be moved. So what they had to do is take the books out of that dumpster and put it into another container that could be moved. Then they had to move that to another room which is on the far side of the building to process it. Then they had to move those books onto the shelves. So what they did, that lounge area was where they received the books, and they made that a processing room. So now they changed the dumpster that's inside so it's not stationary. They put wheels on it and lowered it so they could move it. They moved the circulating desk to the front of the library and they ended up, rather than handling the book eight times, they handled the book 
six times, five times. So what does that mean? Well, now we have more time to provide other programs without hiring other people. And the whole department, all the departments went through Six Sigma, and it was a great program. And it seems to me, I brought this up, and I think there's just an attitude, no. There's an attitude, no, and we'll figure out how we can turn it down. We'll put in numbers and so forth. For example, I don't care if appliances or tires are picked up without a fee. They usually are picked up when somebody buys an appliance, they pick up the appliance. And tires, I don't know how they ever end up there. But I'm fine that if you, if you don't have this program or some program, um, and, and that the, on the department, Joe Terry's department has to figure that out. I don't know, maybe if they have um, brush, brush pickup once a month, maybe behind that truck with two people, they should have a, a dump truck. And so when they pick up the brush, they have people there from the, from the brush pickup that can go back and throw something into the dump truck. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't have to be once, uh, one week a month. Maybe it's every other month. Um, and any landlords that are, somebody's moving, if it's not a landlord or a landlord, they should pay for the full cost of picking that up. I'm talking about the mattress. I'm talking about the couch. I'm talking about the lazy boy. That if we don't pick it up, well, they can go and take it over to a landfill. Yeah, you know, some of these homes you find in their backyard, they're stacking them up. And if they choose not to take it to a landfill, which would be a responsible thing to do, I'm not sure all our residents are responsible, they'll end up in some field in the river um, and, and taking away from the appearance of our, of our um, neighborhoods. So I agree with what some of the things that Joe Terry is saying here, but I'm saying can we uh, sharpen our pencil, think about how we could do things like I mentioned at the library, and, and revise it? I'm not saying it has to be appliances and tires, and um, you know, maybe it's a way of, of doing some other way, but I don't think we, we thought creatively. I know Joe works hard on this, and they have a demand. You read the department report, and there's a lot of things going on. I'm not um, oblivious to that. All I'm saying is, I think there can be some creative thinking that could do this a few times of the year, three months, and in the summer, we have summer employment. I mean, we have part-time people, and maybe it's from June to September, I don't know. But in winter, I don't, you know, forget it with the plowing and everything else. But all I'm saying is I'm not, I'm satisfied with the thoroughness that Joe has done here. But I'm not satisfied to being more creative, thinking out of the box. And I, I, you can't add more. Maybe, for example, in cutting the um, lawns, uh, maybe there's some fields we can, or some grass we can cut every fourth week some grass we can cut every two weeks. It's, it's, it's not obvious. People won't be annoyed by it. Maybe you gotta get a bigger uh, lawnmower and put that personnel uh, helping to pick up this refuse. Uh, it just, you know, like for example, you know, like machinery. If there's something that's taking a lot of time, maybe we should put in the budget something that would reduce some time for some people and that time for some people could be used for this. The idea is, do you want to do it or not want to do it? I have a feeling that it's a sense in that department, we don't want to do it. So we're going to figure out a way to write all this down and show how it's going to be a problem with the taxpayer and all this other stuff. And rather than saying, we're going to do it, we're going to be within the budget, we're going to be uh, with regard to concerning about the taxpayer, and we'll have to try to figure out a way. And we got plenty of time. Who says it's gonna start this summer? 
and maybe maybe if it starts, maybe it has to be in a couple uh, alder um, districts just to try it. I don't know, but I think we have this attitude, we don't want it, so we'll figure out a way not to do it and say the price tag's too high, or do we want it and we'll figure out a way to do it within the budget. And that's my attitude toward this. So I, I appreciate all the work and I understand it, but I think I, this is how I feel it's coming. It's like, we don't want to do it, we had it, it was nice at one time, and now let's forget about it. Unless our neighborhoods get uh, have all these problems eventually, and then we'll say, what the heck did we do? Now we gotta come up with a program. I, I, don't, I don't understand it. I think there's a creative way of doing it, and it's easy for me to say. I understand it was easy uh, for the library to say, oh, we need some more people for new programs. They didn't say that. They didn't come to the Common Council and say, we need more staff. They figured out how they could change their routines within that building and didn't have to add more to it. And I think that's the mentality in any of our departments, not just this issue, any of the departments. Think smarter, think out of the box, and consider the taxpayer. So that's my opinion. Thanks. Mr. Chairperson, could I comment, please? Yes. Uh, I just want to follow up with a couple things because I, I think it's important um, that the older persons and the and the public are aware of a few things. Um, so so the the referral included appliances and tires, which is why that's what we reviewed is that's what was asked for. Um, a monthly program is what was asked for, so that's what we reviewed. The uh, the Lean Six Sigma, Sigma and the and the efforts that you offered about the library, I'm not sure to what extent the library staff was cut since Lean Six Sigma was, but the Public Works Department has been significantly. Um, and I certainly have great pride in the effort that staff has made at the, at the street department to improve efficiencies with less staff and equipment. For example, we're, we're able to fix many more catch basins in a year because the gentleman sitting right here in this room came up with a method to make that process more efficient. We have a single dedicated trailer that has everything on it for those activities. So when that crew goes out in the field, we're not wasting time running around back to the shop to get something that we forgot. Everything's right there. Um, you know, our fleet, we've become more um, economical with our fleet, extending the life of equipment. The simple fact of the matter is we have 150 miles worth of streets. We're replacing a mile a year. The, the effort and the stress level of staff to try to keep up with those maintenance activities is approaching a, a breaking point. And every day we're looking at ways to work more efficiently, and we are. But a program like this, our ordinance never did have an allowance for us to be collecting this stuff. We used to have four people out on garbage every day. We now have two. So. We're trying to use the two people that we have more efficiency for the more efficiently so that we can accomplish more more maintenance activities. If if we're okay with substituting some services, if the city's okay with that, then we'll spend the time to collect large items. We've got no problem performing the services that the city council wants us to perform. This is not a negative Nancy report. This is, this is a realistic report. If we're going to perform an extensive service that nobody else does, nobody else picks up tires and appliances. Nobody does that. I would, I would be really interested if there's a single municipality in the state of Wisconsin that actually collects that stuff. And they can't afford to do it anymore anyway because we're limited with what we can spend and we have to become more efficient and some of these Cadillac services have to get cut off. So 
Um, you know, I appreciate the, the suggestion that, look, just do what it takes to get it done. But we spent probably six months last year debating mowing a section of the city that we, that's what we were trying to do is figure out how to make small adjustments so that we could get everything done that needs to get done. Um, you know, so, so I, I appreciate the request. I would love to be able to provide that kind of service. Um, and, and if there's, if, if there's a desire to, to, to see us change some things, um, as far as the service levels that we're providing, I'd be happy to do it. Um, but I just want to make sure that any suggestion that we're not every day seeking at ways to become more efficient and do better, um, that that's a high priority for us. Um, it's a high priority for my staff, our department heads and, and hourly employees alike. And, um, and, and I think if you followed them around, you'd see that the level of efficiency, and if you read the public works report every month, the, uh, the amount of success that we have with the limited staff that we have is, uh, is impressive. So I, I won't say that there's never room for improvement, Scott, but in this case, this is a substantial program that would, that would take a lot of uh, resources to, to implement. And, uh, and it's significant enough that it, it, just, it couldn't be done just by absorbing it in and, and not changing other things. Jake, um, basically, the problem I had in writing the referral, I put in appliances and some tires. I mean, that gives you a whole different paradigm. Take that out. Take it out. And then go up and down some of our streets and see the, the couches and the, and the mattresses out there and so forth. And <clears throat> I, if we had a cut, why did we make the cut? You mentioned that your staff is... You have fewer people. And then if we had four people on the uh, garbage crew to pick up, and now we have two, what happened to the other two? And I know they get absorbed. I know they get, you know, they get into programs, and all of a sudden they're gone. But maybe we need to add a, another one. I remember in the budget and the discussion we had, we wanted to hire two more people to cut grass. I don't know how, what, I, I guess I should know what happened to that proposal, but maybe it, we just cut that. And then part-time help in the summer. Maybe we can do it with some of the part-time help. I don't know that. That's your um, domain. That's your area of expertise. And I think your staff and the, and the <laughs> employees are doing a fantastic job. It's not a question of work and efficiency and hard work and all that. I'm just saying, is it something that could be done differently? And if you weighed all the options and looked at all the aspects of it, if everybody knew they could have a large pickup in July and a large pickup in October before school starts, those two months, and just pick up the large items, they would they have it in their backyard, they have it on the side of the house, they have it in their basement, just go and pick it up then. But, and, and then clear those areas out. I, I mean, we get the report on all the ordinance violations of all the garbage that's in the, in the yards, or we get ordinance violations of all this and all that. I mean, if we had this program, you wouldn't have all those ordinance violations. And then they get the ordinance violation, and now that becomes that residence problem. Well, I'm 69 years old or I'm 50 years old. What am I going to do with that? How do I get rid of it? And I, I know there's private groups that, you know, companies that maybe we could work with. But it just seems I just like to look at things as let's do it and what would be the consequences and forget about the appliances and forget about the tires. That was... I screwed up on saying that in the uh, recommendation. But I don't know. I just think that it's something to rather than just say, no, we can't do it, I'd like to just say, 
what are some options that might be available? And I know in listening to your reports, you do you do effic things efficiently. I'm not criti <laughs> I'm not questioning that. I'm just saying, can we try and look at this differently? So it's not a criticism of you or the department or employees or it's just the idea um, of a topic that I think people want. And I've, people have expressed it to me. I get phone calls, and I'm not talking about the landlord that people moving out or somebody's moving out of their house, charging for that pickup. I'm talking about those incidental things that maybe a dumpster, dump truck could follow the brush pickup truck, and you got three men there or three people, and they could take care of it. But I don't know. That's just I want to express my opinion. That's it. Thanks. Um, Thank you, Mr. Kellogg. I would just—I was part of the system or the vetting of the new recycling garbage system that we put in a couple years ago. And is it—is Miss Schill in the room tonight? No. So one of the issues we had when we went through drawing up the ordinance and the legal language of it and sending it to the state, they sent back is that we did actually look at. Uh, it was going to be a tag program of people who had refuge that they couldn't fit into their bins. They would be able to buy a tag from the city garage and put it on there. And that was turned down. So it, it's, we went through this, we tried and it just wasn't possible. And I, I would just remind everyone of that, that, that this is an idea that's been floated and without taking drastic ramifications of what Mr. Terry went through with our budget and other things, uh, we looked at, tagging garbage bags or tagging items in the city doing that and it was looked at and I would reference attorney Phil on this as a for-profit almost business and we couldn't operate that way and so that's why we didn't we took it out of the ordinance that was originally written but maybe Mr. Terry can speak more of that I know Ms. Schill can uh, I don't have much else to say on that I open the floor to anybody else who does yeah um, hey Jake this is Dean um, yes I um my take on this is that if there wasn't an outlet for these items already in the private sector, it'd be another story. But um, people need to have a little personal responsibility. Um, and in, um, along those same lines, we have to enforce these ordinances when they're left out. There's been a couch out on, on um, off, a, off a gainer on one of the cross streets, I can't remember the number for about a month. <laughs> and I've talked to the, the garbage, the general gentleman driving the garbage truck said, yeah, it's been there for a couple of times and I believe they've checked into it. Um, at some point, we have to enforce that ordinance. Um, but by the same token, you can't, it's known you can't put a couch out on the street and expect it to just go away. <laughs> it, it costs about, I think, Last time I took a load to the dump of construction waste and a bunch of breaking down a bathroom, it was probably size of four or five couches. It cost me like $23 to take it to the landfill. It's not an outrageous amount of money, and it's not something I think we can expect the taxpayers to, to pay. But it's important that we really enforce these ordinances. Um, yesterday, and um, by now, it's probably known around the city there, I noticed and I actually sent some pictures to to Mr. Terry and Public Works and and um, Mr. Starks and there was um, somebody completely left their apartment uh, on Grand Avenue on West Grand and or their house, apparently that's what happened and everything was out there, four or five mattresses, pile of junk, excess garbage, overfilled things and um, I took the picture, I sent it in, and then I was reminded to um, utilize the, the um, City of Wisconsin Rapids website, or app, excuse me, that can be downloaded. And I would encourage residents to download that app. If you see somebody who's left something out for a long period of time, take a picture of it, and that app's pretty helpful. Um, um, I'm all in for beautifying the neighborhood, but I'm also in for, in, 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 favor of, excuse me, in favor of personal responsibility and knowing that I can't just throw junk out in the street and expect it to be picked up. 
Um, there's a fee for that. And I know you pulled um, um, appliances and tires off the off the um, off of the referral, but appliances, for instance, um, recyclers charge charge anywhere from twenty five to fifty dollars to pick those up, and then they still use the steel from it. <laughs> so there's a value to it to to businesses, and I'm I think that um, there's a number of recyclers in town that will pick up a lot of these items. And um, and I think they'll charge a fee to for garbage pickup as well. So I just think if there wasn't an outlet for it, maybe it's something we could talk for the city, but I think we need to leave this to the private sector. That's my take on it. Thank you, Mr. Veneman. Would anyone on the floor like to make an action? Okay. Well, with that, we'll move on to item number seven, which is review the referral list. Does anybody have any questions on anything on there? Or comments? So okay, I, thank you. I think we could remove um, item number eight. And I think everything else yeah, everything else would stay on there. All right, could we please have the minutes reflect that we're moving number, item number eight from the referral list? Unless anybody has an objection to that. And again, this is always an item that can come back. Uh, I think we vetted through it well tonight. Any other comments on the referral list for Public Works item number seven? And I'll move to item number eight, which is adjournment. Motion to adjourn. I'll second. All in favor, signal by saying aye. 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 Meeting adjourned at 7.43 p.m. Thank you, everyone. Stay safe.